In 479 BC, when Persian soldiers besieged the Greek city of Potidaea, they observed that the water retreated away from the shore much farther than usual, leaving a convenient road for invasion. But it wasn't a matter of luck. Before the attackers reached the city of Potidaea, the water again returned to the shore with a much greater height, thus drowning the attackers. The Potidaeans believe that they have been saved by the anger of Poseidon, their god. But what really saved them is a natural phenomenon that had destroyed countless others. And today in this video, we will discuss about this natural phenomenon in details. In the previous slide, we saw that a natural phenomena led to an unnatural rise in the water level. And this natural phenomena is called tsunami. So what is a tsunami? A tsunami is a series of gigantic waves. That is, it is not just a single large wave, but many gigantic waves. In fact, the first wave of the tsunami is not always the largest one, but the waves followed by the first one are much larger than the first one. Also, the waves of tsunami are quite different from the ordinary sea waves because they have greater heights, they travel faster and they can cause massive damage to life and property. Now, the height of a tsunami wave is correlated with the depth of the water body. Let me explain you how. When the tsunamis originate in deep oceans, they are hardly detectable because when the tsunamis travel in deep oceans, the speed of the tsunami waves are very high. That is, they travel at a speed of 500 miles per hour. So since these waves travel at a high speed, they have very low heights. And therefore, these tsunami waves are hardly detectable. But as these tsunami waves proceed towards the shore, their speed decreases. And they travel at a speed of 45 miles per hour. And since there is a decrease in their speed, the potential energy stored in the waves leads to a massive rise in the height of the waves. And so, when the tsunami waves travel towards the shore, they have greater heights and they travel at a relatively lower speed. So, this phenomena is called wave shoaling. Hence, what is wave shoaling? Wave shoaling is a phenomena in which there is a change in the behavior of waves as they move into shallower water body or water body which has decreasing depth. Now, how the behavior of wave changes? The behavior of wave changes because as the waves travel towards the shore, their speed decreases from 50 miles per hour, they travel at a speed of only 45 miles per hour and therefore due to decrease in their speed, the height of these waves increases and they crash on the shore and this is known as tsunami and this phenomena is called wave shoaling. We just read that the tsunamis are hardly detectable if they originate in deep oceans. But as the waves travel towards the shore, the tsunamis become very prominent. And so these gigantic waves that travel towards the shore are called tsunami. Now, tsunami is a Greek word where su means harbor and nami means waves. The tsunamis also means harbor waves or the gigantic waves that travels towards the shore. The waves of tsunami are more prominent at the shore and they are hardly detectable in deep oceans. We have already understood the meaning of tsunami. Now let us discuss the factors that are responsible for the occurrence of tsunami. 
Tsunamis are mainly caused due to earthquakes at ocean floors. In this video, we can see that as two tectonic plates are colliding, it is releasing stress which is causing a submarine earthquake. Now, the energy released during an earthquake displaces the water level and produces large waves. These waves gradually travel towards the shore and leads to the formation of a tsunami. Thus, earthquake is a major cause behind the formation of tsunami. In December 2004, an earthquake of magnitude 9.0 occurred in Indian Ocean. This underwater earthquake triggered large waves of tsunami. This tsunami was very devastating. It affected many Southeast Asian countries like India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Indonesia. It also affected the faraway coastal regions of East Africa. See, in this map, we can see that the regions marked in red are the areas that are affected by this tsunami. The main cause for the occurrence of this tsunami was an underwater earthquake which was of magnitude 9.0. This tsunami was very devastating and it is one of the major natural disasters ever recorded in history. The tsunami took away more than 2 million lives and left many uncountable people homeless. Apart from killing the native citizens of these places, the tsunami also affected the tourists that went to visit those places. Most of the tourists either died or went missing. This tsunami was indeed a very major one and it was caused due to an underwater earthquake. Now before we proceed with our lesson, can you help me to answer this question? What was the main cause of 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami? Was it an underwater volcano, an underwater earthquake? or a violent storm or tides. Well, we just read that the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami was caused due to an underwater earthquake. So, the correct answer is underwater earthquake. Apart from earthquakes, another major cause for the occurrence of tsunami is a submarine volcanic eruption. We know the volcanic eruptions mainly occur at the earth's surface, but they can also take place at the sea floor. So, if a violent volcanic eruption occur at the sea floor where the magma comes out, it displaces the water column lying above it. These eventually produces large or giant sea waves which gradually approaches towards the shore and leads to the formation of tsunami. Now, let me give you an example of this. The Krakatoa volcanic eruption of 1883 generated a terrible tsunami. Now, Krakatoa volcano is situated in this part of Indonesia. Now, this volcanic eruption was very violent which produced large waves and triggered a tsunami. This tsunami killed nearly 36,000 people and washed away the coastal regions of Sumatra and Java. So, the tsunami that occurred in 1883 is an example of a tsunami caused by a volcanic eruption. Less frequently, tsunamis can also be formed due to rock falls or landslides at the ocean floor. We know landslides are formed when the ground shakes due to sudden tremors produced during an earthquake. Now, due to this rock fall at the ocean floor, the water column placed above it gets displaced and produce large waves. These waves gradually approaches towards the shore and leads to the formation of tsunami. Thus, landslides that occur at the ocean floor can also provoke tsunamis. On 10 July 1958, 
a terrible tsunami occurred in Alaska due to a landslide. What happened is that there was a rock fall or landslide into the ocean which triggered tsunami. The waves of tsunami was more than 500 meter high. So this tsunami is one of the greatest tsunami ever recorded in history and this tsunami was caused due to a landslide. So now let us summarize the major causes of tsunami. One of the major cause of tsunami is earthquake. Another major cause of tsunami is a violent volcanic eruption. Tsunamis also occur due to landslides. Now if all these natural activities occur at the ocean floor, then they can trigger giant waves thereby causing a tsunami. Tsunamis are usually very destructive. While explaining the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami, I mentioned that the tsunami was very destructive and it took away more than 2 million lives and also affected the coastal regions of Southeast Asian countries. The destructions are caused mainly due to two reasons. The first reason is large volume of water crashing on the shore and the second reason is that the waves crash on the shore at a high speed. And so due to these two reasons, tsunamis usually cause immense destruction. So now let us discuss the effects caused during a tsunami. The first harmful effect of tsunami is destruction of property. Tsunami not only destroys human properties like buildings, cars, factories, etc., but it also damages roads. After destroying the buildings and properties present in the shore, the waves of tsunami gradually move inwards and causes additional damage of properties. So the first effect of tsunami is that it destroys human properties. Now let us look into other effects of tsunami. In this image, we can see that the houses are floating on water and this area is totally covered by the waves of tsunami. So this is the kind of destruction that is caused during a tsunami. Apart from destroying human property, tsunamis simultaneously kills many life. If you remember, I mentioned that 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami took away more than 2 million lives. So you can imagine what kind of destruction was caused during the tsunami. In this image, you can see dead bodies are floating on water. These people have died due to tsunami. Now people instantly die during tsunami because of drowning. So when the large waves of tsunami crash on the shore, the area gets flooded and due to this reason, these people drown and get killed. Now flooding is a common problem caused during tsunami. In this picture, you can see that the area is fully submerged under water. We know that people instantly die during tsunami due to drowning. But apart from that, additional death is caused post-tsunami due to unhygienic living conditions. The death happens because infectious diseases like malaria spreads in stagnant water. So since large areas of land remains under water, this gives rise to many infectious diseases like malaria. Now, due to this natural disaster, you do not receive any immediate medical help. So, this unhygienic living condition prevails, which causes mass death. Another major effect of tsunami is environmental damage. Tsunami not only destroys human properties and kills people, but it also damages the environment of the coastal regions completely. Small islands of the places go unrecognizable. The trees, buildings, cars, animals, 
farmlands etc are washed away in the waves of tsunami and the places are hardly habitable in this image you can see that trees and other debris are floating in the water so this is the kind of destruction that is caused during a tsunami so from these devastating effects we can infer that tsunami is indeed a natural catastrophe and it causes massive destruction the destruction caused during a tsunami is hardly inevitable because when the water rapidly rushes into the land you hardly get any time to escape and you are drowned in the water in no time but if we can predict tsunami then we can take proper measure so is there any way of predicting tsunami yes there are ways of predicting tsunami the first way is unnatural fall in sea level if the water level at the shore recedes away unnaturally or if there is an unnatural fall in the sea level then we can infer that tsunami might occur now why there is a unnatural fall in water level this is because the water level in deep oceans rises and so the water at the shore recedes away so this unnatural fall in sea level is an indication of tsunami apart from that if any earthquake occurs in the coastal region there might be a possibility of tsunami also this is because while discussing the causes of tsunami i mentioned that underwater earthquake is a major cause of tsunami so the earthquake in coastal regions can displace the water level and cause tsunami so these indications like unnatural fall in water level and earthquake in coastal regions help us to predict tsunami but these indications can be misleading and may not be always true in the previous slide we read that it is very difficult to predict a tsunami now here we have a list of some of the major tsunamis of the world on 28th october 1707 a tsunami occurred in nankaido japan the major cause of this tsunami was an earthquake and this tsunami was quite fatal and it took away nearly 30000 lives another tsunami occurred on 1st november 1755 the place of occurrence was lipson portugal and again the major cause of this tsunami was an earthquake this tsunami was even more destructive and it took away 60000 lives the most devastating tsunami ever recorded in history took place on 26 december 2004 and the place of occurrence of this tsunami was in indonesia the major cause of this tsunami was earthquake this tsunami was quite fatal and it killed took more than 2 million lives now a tsunami that was triggered by volcano happened on 27th august 1883 the tsunami triggered by volcano occurred in krakatoa indonesia this tsunami took 40000 lives most recently a tsunami has hit the northern coast of japan the tsunami occurred on 11th march 2011 the major cause of this tsunami was again an earthquake and this tsunami killed 18000 lives now you can pause the video and have a deeper look into the chart so in today's video we first understood the meaning of a tsunami what is a tsunami a tsunami is a series of gigantic waves then we also understood the behavior of tsunami waves we also learned about the factors that are responsible for the occurrence of tsunami then we learned how devastating a tsunami can be and finally we read about the ways in which we can predict a tsunami don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon 
You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now